Hi, I'm Dave Cross from the Dave Cross Workshops, here to talk to you a little bit about the world of smart objects. Now, if you've ever seen me teaching at a seminar or at Photoshop World or on Photoshop User TV, you'll know I'm a big, big fan of smart objects. And there's really one simple reason, that's I'm lazy. I don't want to have to do the same work over again. I don't want to be able to have to start over if I change my mind or if something changes. Now, I talk a lot about smart objects, but often I show examples that are kind of complex and show all kinds of possibilities. So here's a very simple example of what you can do with a smart object. We're going to take one photograph and we want to add a nice edge effect to it using a layer mask. But by using a smart object, we can make that as almost like a template. Now technically, Photoshop doesn't call it a template when you save it that way, but it really is. When you save a PSD file, it becomes a reusable file. It's very easy to edit. So let's take a look at how we can start off using smart objects to create a nice reusable template just for one photograph. I think one of the best ways to, to really understand what smart objects can do and to use them as this whole template idea is just to do a really simple example where you have a photograph, you want to add some edge effect and be able to reuse that edge effect very, very easily. And we can do that thanks to a smart object. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn this regular background photo into a smart object. I right click or control click and choose convert to smart object. Now I should also take a step back and say, you're going to do yourself a favor if you pick an image to start with that's typical of the size and quality and resolution that you use all the time because then it'll just be simpler when you go to replace it with another photograph. So having done that, make it into a smart object, that means that whatever I do next, the contents of this smart object don't change. So for example, if I were to scale this way down and hit enter, normally in Photoshop that would mean that's the new size. But because it's a smart object, it looks kind of inside at the contents and you can scale it right back up to its original size without losing any quality. Now you can't scale it larger than it was because that would still lose some quality, but at least it means it kind of preserves the content. So that's kind of the idea of why we take advantage of this. So let's do this. I'm just going to take my marquee tool and make a selection. I'm not too, too worried about how it looks for now. And then I'm going to click on the add layer mask button so that we've hidden those areas. Now just to see what it's going to look like, ultimately I'm going to command or control click on this new layer and fill it with white just so as we're working on this we can see what the effect will look like when we print it on a white piece of paper. So now we'll click back on the layer mask and at this point I want to do something more interesting to it than just the way it is right now. And there's a variety of things we could do. The simple example would be to take my paintbrush with some unusual one of these sort of textured brushes that are here and then try and do a bit of brushing. I'm just going to make the brush a little bigger. I'm going to click once at the top, hold down the shift key and click again. And my goal here is just to kind of make the edge look a little more unusual. So for now I'm just kind of painting here and there just to start off to get something. And if I option or alt click on the layer mask you can see that's what the layer mask actually looks like. Now a really interesting way in CS5 to make the edge look even more interesting is to take the mixer brush tool because with this tool it kind of turns our paint here almost as if it's wet paint. So now for example you can see I start to kind of paint this and it's going to blend them together and create this really interesting kind of watercolor painted kind of look. And let's use a different brush that's even more interesting, one like say this one because now I can start to pull and you can see it depends on the angle that I push and pull it's going to have a different effect but it really is like we're kind of pushing paint around so as we do this more we can get some really interesting effects sometimes it takes a couple of steps where you have to paint one direction and then the other to try and create the look that you want now, I'm not going to spend too long on this part but this is kind of the idea and of course now in the context of your photograph that's what it's going to look like. The other advantage of the fact that it's a smart object is then I can also do a smart filter. So for example let's say I want to sharpen this photograph. So I'm going to do an unsharp mask to my photograph and use some numbers. I'm going to kind of overdo a little bit just so you can see it. Now that's sharpen everything equally. I don't want to necessarily sharpen her face the same amount so I could go onto the smart filter mask and take my regular paintbrush, not the mixer brush, and just go back to a regular kind of paintbrush at this point and paint with black to say don't really want to sharpen 
her skin quite as much, something like this. Now, of course, I'm painting specifically to this photograph, and eventually when I replace another one, I'll have to redo that part, but that's pretty darn simple. So let's pretend for the sake of argument that I've got the edge looking the way I want. I've got my smart filter applied the way I want. I'm going to save this as a PSD file, which will preserve everything like it is right here. Now it's a few weeks later, and I want to start off with the same effect to a different photograph. So all I need to go is to go to the smart object, right or control click beside it, and choose replace contents. And as long as I pick a photograph which is the same size, then what will happen is it will automatically replace it and you see the mask is applied and so is the smart filter. What I'd have to do is fill the smart filter with white because of course that was the mask for the previous version. Then come in here and paint in the areas that I don't want to sharpen to update this one like this. So everything we would do in there. And let's pretend I did that whole thing. And now it's in the mask already. Now, I may not want the mask to look exactly like the first one. So I might try, for example, do some kind of filter on top of it just to kind of see what effect we get when we apply some filter to the mask that's already there. And that's going to make it just look a little bit different than the previous one. So it's not exactly the same. So you see it just adds a different effect. And then I would save this as a different version, therefore kind of preserving my template. Now that was a fairly straightforward example because there's really one photograph, we made a smart object, we added a layer mask and a smart filter. But the sky's the limit here, folks. There are so many possibilities when you realize what smart objects can do and how you can use them to save you time and effort. So I hope you'll start exploring the world of smart objects. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching.